So we've been seeing this like really great trend of stuntmen successfully transferring into directing. What are the biggest skills that you kind of gained as a stunt coordinator that made this transition a successful one? Um, so the the path went from you know got, getting out of the army, becoming a stuntman, from a stuntman to becoming a fight coordinator, and then becoming a stunt coordinator, then becoming second unit director, and then becoming a director. And when you're directing second unit, I've been doing it for like 20 years now, you know, like directing second unit, directing big car shake key sequences or big fight sequences is actually harder than directing some actors at a table. I mean, if you have good actors, it's easy. If you have bad actors, maybe it's hard. I don't know yet because I haven't directed any bad actors. But, you know, when you're doing when you're locking up a city and you have six cars and four motorcycles and helicopters and explosions, you have a finite amount of time to do the work. And you're also under the pressure of not killing someone. So there's, it's a pressure cooker. You're working very fast and under very dangerous conditions, but it's a hell of a lot of fun. And I was having a great time doing that, but you know, like helping Chad out on Wick 1, John Wick 1 and John Wick 2, watching their trajectory, Dave and Chad's trajectory going up, they started calling me and people started calling and sending me scripts. As soon as I got day shift, I knew I had to do it because my favorite movies from when I was growing up were Lost Boys, uh, Big Trouble in Little China, Evil Dead, and the original Fright Night action comedy horror and that's where my heart was i wanted to have all three of those ingredients like i love john wick we worked really hard trained keanu on you know got him as good as we could get him but you're based in reality even though it's not realistic that he could gun down how many people but you're still he's a human being that has to pay he has to there's gravity and things that he cannot bend as soon as you bring vampires in the mix well you reality plus 70 percent. now i've got dramatic license on the action to do whatever I want, which only elevates things. So you have these two worlds that hide in plain sight, the vampires and the hunters union colliding, which for me was super interesting and fun. And I just want like, like right now, if you turn on the news, it's dark, man. There's, you know, there's monkey pox and, and COVID and Ukraine and Russia and Taiwan and China. And I just wanted to do something fun that you didn't have to feel you didn't have to watch or somebody was trying to force an opinion on you or you know, I just wanted people to enjoy it. A little bit of escapism doesn't hurt anybody. And a few laughs can only do the world good right now, my brother. Definitely. And the action in this is so much fun. I even saw some pro wrestling moves thrown in there, which I thought Come was on, such dog, a cool Lucha thing. Libre, bro. Yeah. So, like, what were your goals with the fight scenes? And where did you kind of take the inspiration from? Well, what, inspiration comes from everything that you've seen or done in your life. So, inspiration from all the movies I've worked on, probably inspiration wasn't the, what I said to my action team that I've been on the road with for like seven years said, I don't want to do anything that we've already done. I want to look for new ways to do things. And if we ever say, well, let's just do the old, I said, then we failed and we die a small death. So the vampires needed to have an interesting look. So we, we brought contortionists and doubled them with stunt players and doubled them with fighters. So Something like, for example, the grandma, there's the actress, there's a stunt double, there's a fight double, and there's a contortion double. And the contortion work itself, when we slam them and fold them in half, we shot that in reverse. They're in half, and then we pulled them out on a wire, and we played it in reverse, but with a magic camera speed that I can't disclose unless you give me a lot of money. There's a secret there. But um, So I wanted to change the way that vampires fought, so I mixed it with things like Lucha Libre, wire work, and they're so bendy, it's like fighting an octopus that's trying to bite you. And at the same time, throwing in some MMA moves, like, like a crucifix, right? You know, you saw the mount, the switch. So I wanted to throw a few things in there that look familiar, that people could relate to, but then throw it on its head and then, and then try it over again. So yeah, I, I, I just wanted everybody to have their own style. I love it. And then my last question, I thought just having a fight, big fight, the body counts in the house was so awesome. How do you like choose your music here? Because the, the soundtracks is just dope. Thank you, brother. Well, listen, I'm a big fan of, of that era. You know, I wanted the film to be take place in today, but feel like Bud is trapped in the 80s, kind of like I'm trapped in the 80s. Look at the cowboy shirt and look at the fucking, you know, like I'm stuck in the 80s, dog. So I, I wanted to, him to be that, and I wanted the music to feel like that too, because if you go in my car, it's going to be old school hip hop or Ozzy's Boneyard. That's what it is if you go on my radio right now. So I wanted Bud to be as much like me as I could. So when Jamie asked me a question, I wouldn't sound like an idiot giving him a stupid answer. <laughs>